What's up, cooks? It's Wednesday. Today, we're going to talk about how to set up a chafing dish. So over here in the oven, I have some chickens roasting. I have some onions and potatoes in here. We're going to set up one chafing dish hot, one chafing dish cold, and have us a little party, right? I want some watermelon. <laughs> so join me. Let's talk about how to ch set up a chafing dish. So this is a chafing dish, and we recently unboxed these from Vivor. We have two of these big round ones and one double-sized rectangular that has two pans in it. So the reason you want to use a chafing dish is when you are having an event, you want to keep your food warm or chilled so they're enjoyable for your guests. So you want to keep them tasting the best that they can, right? If your food cools off, it's not going to taste like fresh, like you want it to, right, for your guests. Leave your food safe. Yeah, so chafing dish helps keep it warm. They can also keep it cool. So this is a round chafing dish. And what's great about these chafing dishes from Vivor is they have roll top. Oh. That means a lot of them just have like a top, like a pan top. And then when your guests go to serve themselves, they don't have anywhere to put the lid. So they'll put it down on your linens or they'll just clumsy try to um, serve themselves. What's great about this is your guest just rolls it on up to access the food. So the way these work is they have two pans. One is an inner pan. This is a large inner pan. So if you're doing this as a hot chafing dish, you're going to put hot water in here. If you're doing this as a chilled chafing dish, you can put ice in here, right? So you put that in there. And this is your food pan. So your food's going to go in here. And you want the water to be below the pan. You don't want it to be hitting this because it could splash over and leak, right? So you want it below the pan. So say you're doing a hot chafing dish. You need something to keep it hot. So down below, there's a little can down here. And this can holds a sterno. And the sterno is what keeps it warm. And basically, a sterno is a uh, fuel can. It has like this gel in there that will keep a flame. So I, Eric already popped this for me, and this is what this looks like. Ooh, right? So all you do is you drop this into the can, and you light it. And so if you can see the flame the flame is running, right? And when you want to uh, turn it off, you're going to put this and Quince snuff it. out the flame, right? Whoa. <laughs> so you're going to take this and you're going to put it in here. And when you put your warm water in there, it's going to keep that water warm. It's not like a burner where you can put a cold water in there and it'll heat it up. Uh, let me turn this off before I get, uh, yeah, before it gets too hot in there because I don't have any water. You don't want to put cold water and it's not a burner. So it keeps warm water uh, warm and hot. And so you have to keep put hot water in there. If you want it cool, obviously you're going to put the ice in the lower pan and you're not going to use a sterno. You're not going to use a fuel can. So we're going to be setting up two chafers. We're going to be doing the rectangular tape chafer as a hot uh, chafer. And in the oven right now, I have two chickens roasting and some uh, potatoes, roasted potatoes. And this one, I just cut up a big watermelon. That's going to go in here as a cold uh, chafer. So uh, let me get the food out of the oven so we can get going. OK, we got some chickens here. These are coming out, and we're going to cut them up to put in the chafing dish. And here we have some potatoes. They're nice and soft and crispy. 
Wow, they look delicious. I'm going to put a little barbecue rub on them and put them in the pan. Okay, so I have some nice hot water here. We're going to go ahead and pour this in. Um, it doesn't take a huge amount of water, a couple inches. Let me go grab one of the pans. And so I put the potatoes in here. I'm just going to put a little bit more water. And during the night, just watch it because you don't want it to run out because it will um, boil out. Yeah, it'll boil out and brown up the bottom of your thing here. So I'm just going to take my sterno here, my fuel can. There's one. So one funny thing about these sternos, if you buy them at a typical party store, they're only like two hour cans. If you get them at like a club store or restaurant supply, you can get six hour cans. So those are down there. So let me go grab the chicken. And here goes my booze, beautiful oven roasted chicken. It's absolutely delicious. Delicious is not even. I didn't say that she did. It's amazing. <laughs> so that's how it looks. And go ahead and close down the lid. And then we're just waiting for the guests to arrive. Yeah. You can see us. Hi. Mm -hmm. And this is how the sternos are. So this is why you have to keep watch and make sure you keep water in there because I've got to talking and partying and next thing you know it was dry so I had a really mess to clean up uh, after the party <laughs> so that's how they look okay so now we're going to set up the cold uh this is the lower pan and we're going to go ahead and put the ice in there not quite a hundred percent sure how much? Yeah. <laughs> and then we have a whole bunch of um, chunked up water Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And here comes the watermelon. Whoa. <laughs> that is that is watermelon for a crowd right there. And we are sitting on ice, so it's maybe a quarter of an inch too high. Yeah. That's It'll be okay. All right. Um, yeah, so if you're having a big crowd over for 4th of July, these Vivor uh, roll top um, chafing dishes are awesome. Cold or hot, it'll keep your food amazing. So what's up, cooks? It's Wednesday. I hope you enjoyed this look about how to set up both a cold and hot chafing dish. And um, I hope you have a great holiday coming up. So have a great Wednesday, and thanks for joining me.